One of the great things uh, in SharePoint 2010 it's its tight integration between Visual Studio 2010 and uh, other tools such as SharePoint Designer. So in this particular example, I want to show how you can extend uh, Visual, Studio, Visual Studio 2010 um, RC um, and specifically the Server Explorer SharePoint Connections uh, node here. So this is a new feature that's been um, not available in past versions and in this version uh, we have uh, kind of a explorer for our various objects and uh, types within our SharePoint. Um, as you notice here, um, if you have an instance of, uh, of Visual Studio 2010 RC running, uh, you'll notice some of those items are familiar, but there is a custom item that I've just added uh, called Web Part Gallery. And, um, and then it shows all of the web parts that we have installed uh, in our Web Part Gallery. And what we could do, we could pick the Web Part of our choice and then uh, get the web part definition. So I'm going to show you how that particular component was done. So first of all, I'm going to, uh, to create this particular project, I'm going to create, um, I need to, to install Visual Studio SDK um, for, uh, for RC and uh, you could just uh, download that uh, version. One, one thing to note, if you're using Visual Studio Beta 2, um, I strongly recommend uh, downloading Visual Studio uh, 2010 RC, uh, but also make sure that your Visual Studio uh, uh, SDK is the same version um, as your as your um, as your Visual Studio. Because if you're down, if you have Visual Studio Beta um, installed and then your SDK is for RC, it's not going to work, and you're going to have issues with that. So you notice that this one particularly is SDK for beta 1 and if we type in RC we're going to get the correct version of SDK so this is SDK that you need to download and install and uh, you will you'll be able to create a Visual Studio extensibility project so I already downloaded and installed that and now uh, once I do that under my other projects I have this extensibility option and the type of project that I'm going to create is Visual Studio package over here I'm going to pick any name here and just go through the wizard. And the wizard, the wizard is pretty basic. You pick a language that you're going to be choosing uh, that you're going to be using, then uh, you're going to pick the uh, assembly key, give some information about uh, the company, um, and uh, pretty much that's it. Once you click finish, um, obviously there's a couple of options here. We're just going to not check any of them. Uh, one nice thing one nice thing here is that uh, Visual Studio offers to create unit testing and integration testing projects along with your project. So that's pretty pretty nice and it's pretty well integrated right away. So once you click finish, that'll create a blank uh, solution here uh, with all of those components and uh, pre-baked templates. And it'll bring up the, uh, uh, the manifest of our ext uh, extension here. And in manifest, you can modify some of the information that you've entered during the wizard here. And um, as you can see in our solution, we have Visual Studio Extensibility Pack and as well as uh, our integration in unit tests. So I already created uh, additional uh, couple of classes here that help me with the structure that I'm, that I'm working here. So I'm just going to close this particular solution and I'm going to go back to my Visual Studio that I have here. So I have this, uh, I have two projects here in this solution. I don't have a testing and integration uh, packages here just for, for, for simplicity for this particular demo. So uh, this particular one, uh, uh, habanero.devtools, that web part node is actual, um, is actual uh, a project that takes care of the extensibility. And uh, this, this particular one, habanero devtools web part node extension is, uh, is the one that takes care of a logic to pull up those items over here and as well as items below the, uh, the web part gallery. So um, the type of this project is uh, regular Windows assembly. So in, a, in order to add one, I would just uh, um, create an uh, additional project of a type of the Windows assembly. Uh, in this case, I used C Sharp, Windows, and uh, just regular class library. So that's, that's the type of that project and also important thing to remember to make sure that uh, the namespaces on both of those match. So this namespace and this namespace both match and also make sure that the target framework is, uh, is uh, .NET Framework 4. 
So uh, one of the things uh, here is, is those two classes here. And um, those two classes um, represent, this particular one represents the actual, uh, uh, this particular node, the, the actual folder under root of the site. So this is my site and uh, I have a folder underneath it uh, representing the web part gallery. And uh, once I open the web part gallery, um, those additional items are populated here. So if, if you notice the, the logic, I'm going to put up the code online as well so you can take a look at it, but the logic is pretty straightforward. Um, I initialize the, the tree, I uh, grab the context of the current selected site, and I add the folder to the root of the site with this particular um, with this particular add folder uh, method and one of the parameters that this folder uh, also accepts is the ability to uh, call a delegate and this is my delegate the one that's going to actually render all of the uh, um, all of the web parts here um, that that belong to this particular gallery to the web part gallery and their names right so uh, that's that's pretty much it uh, what needs to be done in order to actually uh, sh show this folder and all of the underlying uh, children of that particular folder. What this one does, um, this one handles the uh, the click event on each of those, and uh, in this case, we're using uh, we're using uh, an item here. Uh, I renamed that one below here. It's called copy XML. So what this is going to do, this is going to copy an XML um, of the web part of the web part to the clipboard so so you could later on just uh, paste it to your solution or for whatever reasons you need that particular definition so this one's pretty straightforward to we, again we initialize the tree uh, create uh, nodes and as well as uh, um, give an option to the to the property um, to the property uh, uh, window over here. One thing you'll notice you won't be able to create an icon uh, right beside your property element so uh, that's kind of uh, uh, a limitation here but not too big of a limitation and also you'll notice every time you highlight a new item that will populate the properties windows window on the right here with the appropriate information about this particular web part so uh, and that's the item that uh, this particular one uh, this particular method takes care of that. So every time the new uh, node is selected or new element is selected, we get a hold of the uh, we get a hold of the uh, the fields uh, the uh, properties of that particular item. In this case, we rep it's represented as a web part, and uh, th those are the the properties that uh, we have, and uh, the uh, we just add them to the uh, to the property window by using the create property source object method. Let me go back to definition of this uh, particular method, and all it is is just uh, a dictionary of uh, of properties. So the name of a property and the value. Therefore, you can't really write back to it. So I can't change approved to some other status uh, because all it is is just a uh, just a static title of the of the property and the actual value of the property. And once I uh, once I click this, this is gonna uh, this is the handler that I have here, and the handler is gonna uh, grab the uh, current um, is gonna grab the current uh, item that I have here, and uh, is gonna connect to the uh, to the item um, and uh, grab the XML definition of the item and just put it to the clipboard and just give us a message saying that. Uh, the web part XML has been copied to clipboard. So to debug it, so first of all, I'm going to change this. Uh, this is going to be the default, the startup project uh, that I have, the the Visual Studio extensibility project. And uh, once I once I run this, just press F5, it'll launch a new instance of Visual Studio 2010 here, and uh, I could uh, I could go from there and kind of demonstrate what's happening. So. I'm gonna expand my SharePoint connections uh, node, and uh, I have a site collection here, and there's a sample site. I'm gonna expand the web part gallery, and I'm gonna click on image viewer, and just click copy XML. I get a message that the XML has been copied to clipboard, 
and now I could just paste that in my own it or anywhere else for that matter and add additional properties as I need them so that's pretty much uh, basic uh, basic functionality that's available and uh, obviously you could take this particular um, this particular structure of a project and create your own extensions so in this case we had a web part gallery but what you could do you could uh, I don't know open the pages uh, folder and then uh, extend the, uh, extend some of the functions that you can do with pages and etc. So it's very powerful uh, concept and uh, Microsoft provides great resources for actually working with this. Um, so as, as soon as you launch Visual Studio, um, at, at least right now, uh, you'll get right away an option extending Visual Studio and you can take a look at the Visual Studio uh, uh, gallery with some of the existing extensions as well as uh, how to write your own extensions.